I'm Jane Grogan and I'm the convener of Spencer in Ireland, a second year single honours English module. Spencer in Ireland examines the career of one of the most important English Renaissance poets, Edmund Spencer, in Ireland, as you might expect. It's impossible to overstate, actually, how important Spencer was to English Renaissance poetry. If we asked Shakespeare, for example, to identify the greatest English poet, he would have named Spencer, maybe alongside Chaucer. Spencer wrote the first great English epic, The Fairy Queen, which itself was an important model for Milton's Paradise Lost. He was a real poetic innovator, and this is one of the main things I'm interested in exploring in this module. He hardly ever wrote in the same genre twice, and he transformed not just the forms of English poetry that he inherited, but also the reputation and possibilities of English itself as a poetic language. And Spencer wrote most of his work in Ireland. One of the so-called New English planter classes, when Spencer came to Ireland, it was as a colonist, a servant of the English crown, a beneficiary of the land grab that saw esqueted Irish lands handed over to a new settler class of English men and women who were charged with planting and civilising the country. And I'm using their terms uh, here very self-consciously with lots of um, inverted commas. In fact, Spencer went further than that, and he wrote a still very controversial treatise on how Ireland could be fully reformed, as he put it, um, in which he advocated some very brutal measures against the Irish. So he's not a figure that you'll find in most uh, historical accounts of Ireland today, and he's not a figure who's remembered very fondly in the country or in North Cork, where he was mostly based. And yet, Irish poets and writers like W.B. Yeats, Seamus Heaney and Frank McGuinness have been fascinated by this history of Spencer in Ireland and have engaged with Spencer's life and work in very searching ways, um, in ways that I think have been important to their their other poetic um, um, and, and dramatic works as well. For some modern Irish writers, Spencer is something of a bogeyman, a very vicious, nasty character who deserved to be burned out of his castle by Hugh O'Neill's forces in 1598, as indeed he was. But for others, Spencer is a nettle to be grasped, an opportunity for us to face up to the political and religious diversity of the Irish literary tradition in ways that the nationalist narrative usually doesn't allow us to do. So in this module, we listen to both sides and we start with Spencer's own work. So we'll read a range of his poetry as well as excerpts from a view of the present state of Ireland, the political treaties that I was telling you about um, and a treatise that Spencer actually sent to the authorities in London. We'll read W.B. Yeats's essay on Spencer and Seamus Heaney's comments on Spencer. We'll read Frank McGuinness's play Mutability, which imagines Spencer and Shakespeare washed up together in Ireland and trying to figure out where they belong. And we're going to read a selection of poems by poets like Kieran Carson, Derek Mahan and Sean Lysett, poets who try to awaken the ghost of Spencer in various ways, give him a shake and make him answer for himself. Uh, In practical terms, the module is examined by essay, um, but also by weekly research questions, um, which are student research questions, which means that pretty much all the seminars are going to be heavily student-led.